As a bodybuilder, I'm wondering, can you tell me how it feels? Like, what is your body, your relationship with your body now? That's a great question. As a woman and as a a bodybuilder and an athlete, it sounds like you've always been very aware of how you look and you want to maintain that. But especially as a bodybuilder, you have to go through that big phase down to the stage phase, which is the phase that, you know, everybody loves how they look, but it's not, it's not sustainable. It's not healthy. So it and it's be, not healthy. It's, it's not, not healthy. healthy. Good point. So it must be hard to let go of that and then have your Dr. Harriet Davis. I have a son and a family and responsibilities body. How do you emotionally deal with all those? This is probably one of the best questions you could have ever asked. Um, because I'm going to be 100% honest, as I always am and authentic in this. It is hard, you know, because number one, you are, I'm going to answer it from the perspective of me. And then I'm going to tell you, you know, what I should be saying to patients or what I do, you know, talk with them about. But um, it is very hard because you don't realize that your body will do the things that it does. You know, so the first time I got on stage, I was impressed, even though when I go back and look, you know, it it definitely your body, it's like anything else, the more you do it, it just gets better and better and better. So it becomes almost this vicious cycle, you know, and it's it's a slippery slope at first, because, you know, if you've ever struggled with any disordered eating, or any of that, which I will be candid and say I have, you know, so that's where a lot of that running you know, hours on end would come in is because I was trying to control things or, you know, my stress went up as I got closer and closer to med school and in med school and my mileage went up. It really did. It was a directly linked. And so, you know, most of us, unless we've been athletes, start looking at that when we approach menopause, you know, as far as that's why we start talking about weight, you know, in a woman who maybe is been normal in size and looks normal, but she knows with her clothes off that there's a little pooch here or something's different. Or, you know, people say, well, what's this hanging, you know, or whatever. I haven't had that. So when you've seen your body go down to being stage lean, which I, I'm going to just be honest, is not healthy because a lot of times you're doing excessive amounts of cardio, you're about to be up there almost naked, right? So you're really cutting down food, you're hungry, which all of this is affecting your sleep, you know, because your body is kind of in this stress state. So when, it, if you don't like really follow that same kind of um, method that, you know, the reverse dieting, like listen to a coach or listen to whoever's instructing you on how you should be eating and exercising, you'll gain a ton of weight. You know, if you just go out after a show or go out after whatever you've been, you know, working on your physique for and just start eating normally. Is that because your body's going, oh my God, thank God, Harriet's feeding me now. I'm going to keep it on because I don't know if she's going to feed me next month. (laughs) And then most of the time your, your brain has been in such a stress state that it's tricking you into thinking you want sweets and Mm. you want fried or salty or, you know, so people are eating a lot of cookies or things that are then going to pull water into the body. So they may think they've gained all this weight and it's not really, it's just excess water, you know, because of how they're eating. And so it's hard at first to look at yourself and appreciate what you're seeing. And it took many years. And I can be honest with you, even last year after I had surgery, you know, because I was training for a show, I was, I was getting ready for a show and had a herniation that required emergency surgery because it almost severed my spinal cord. And so, you know, after that, I was so grateful that I could walk, you know, because of what, how it was when I needed to have surgery that I didn't even go through that part. And then towards the end of the year, as I'm about to travel and other things, you know, I'm looking and my body's healthy. You know, I mean, it it looks great. It's healthy. And all I'm fixating on are the things that have changed post-surgery. And I had to have a serious conversation with myself and give the same grace to myself that I would give to a patient, you know, to say, you just had major surgery in which if they had not been able to successfully remove the disc, from your spinal cord, you know, so decompress that and fuse your spine with hardware, 
you know, you might have been in a wheelchair. So I had to really reel myself in because, you know, we go back to the society standards and looking back at, well, this is what I looked like before surgery. Okay, well, you can get back to that. And that's so that's kind of what I tell people is your body's going to change. And yes, you know, I have patients all the time who have sought me out as their doctor because they're competing and then they decide like they want to start a family and there's this this tug of war and you know some of them need fertility treatments or other things and you know they're asking me well do, why do I have to stop my protein well if they keep telling you that your creatinine is high and there's creatine in this protein and that's a, a breakdown product coming through your kidney functions and that's going to affect whatever medicines they're giving you you have a decision to make are you trying to get back on stage or are you trying to have a baby? You know, and so I, you, I have to apply that. We have to, you know, reel people in all the time because, yeah, you're going to be uncomfortable. As a woman, we go through so much. I mean, even monthly, your body changes during, you know, your menstrual cycle. You're bloated or, you know, sometimes not, but things may look different. They may not. You may have cravings. You may not feel like exercising. It's okay. It is okay if you don't exercise, you know, the way you do all month, a few days, or if you've been sick, or if you travel, it is okay. Life goes on. But if you are dedicated to, you know, or committed, I guess I should say to yourself, then you'll remain dedicated to the overall goal. And that is to remain active and to, you know, have a physique that will go up and down a little bit, you know, and you will love it more times than others. But you have to appreciate what your body does for you on a daily basis. You have the confidence to know that if there's something you don't like, generally you can change it because of your knowledge of weightlifting and body um, crafting, you crafting yes. your, your body shape. So to hear you also have those feelings of uh, self judgment mm -hmm. is probably good for all of us uh, to, um, who feel it also. We didn't think you y'all felt it when you're standing oh, on do. that stage, but I think that it happens. You probably hear a lot about, we talk a lot about disordered eating on this show because yes. myself uh, had bulimia and anorexia in my twenties. I'm 59 now, but 31 years abstinent, but still there, that awareness. And my yes. partner Dotsie also was anorexic. So we we have a lot of empathy and understanding. Mm -hmm. our, we talk very honestly about it on this show. Yes, and we've had yes. other bodybuilders on who've also admitted that they have some body dysmorphia. Oh, because, yep. Yeah. Uh, and so many people do. I, I imagine that in your practice, you see people with disordered eating from the standard American diet too, though. So it's rampant yes. in our society. It is. And it, and you know, a lot of it is because we are so connected now through social media so we see these illusions because we don't know if it's been photoshopped or not, you know, or surgically, you know, enhanced or not. Mm -hmm. And we see these things. And, you know, if you are not confident in who you are or sometimes, you know, a person has not found their purpose yet. And there's that's not their fault or, you know, it's it's life, you know, so they're looking for something because we judge so many things on the outward appearance instead of really getting to know what's inside of a person and what makes that person tick or what's gotten them to that point, you know, so we can be judgmental as humans in general, unlike our animals. That's why we shouldn't eat them. <laughs> and, um, you know, so I still try to have grace. And a lot of times when I'm talking to patients, you know, I don't share, I mean, if they've read it or hear it, that I've struggled with disordered eating, you know, and, that's where I say, and I'm sure you've heard it from tons of bodybuilders that have struggled with the same. And I was more of a avoidant, restrictive. So more along the anorexic, you know, my purging was over exercising. I mean, I just was an over exerciser and then calories low, which probably is why I had the have all the degenerative changes in my back, you know, because of pounding the pavement because I've don't think it started from just bodybuilding. You know, I really do because I had so many stress injuries. But, you know, I, I would say that bodybuilding for a lot of women has probably saved their lives. But then you get to that point where 
you know, you, you have to also let go and understand that you can't stay at this low body fat and this low weight, you know, and so you see people doing things um, or using things, trying to mimic you know, even if they're not on stage anymore. And that's where it still becomes, you know, like that vicious cycle that's more psychological than anything.